determine the derivative for each of the following functions. And now before we get started on them, I'd like to remind you that on the formula sheet, we have the derivative of a function x to the power of n is equal to n times x to the power of n minus one. So essentially we take the power and multiply it out the front and then subtract one from the power. So for a, the derivative, which we'd represent as f dashed of x is simply going to equal and we take the two in the power and multiply it out the front. So two times three gives six and then we subtract one from the power, so we'll just have six x. And then here we have four x, and it's technically to the power of one. So multiplying by the power, we just have one times four gives four, and then taking one off the power gives x to the power of zero, which is simply equal to one. So four x derives to just four, and any constants that we have, like this plus eight, go to zero when we differentiate. So that is the derivative for part A of this example. For B, we have g of x equals negative three over four times x squared plus five x plus nine. So the derivative g dashed of x is going to equal, and we do the same thing. We take the power at the front. So we're going to have two times negative three over four x, and we've subtracted one from the power. And then plus five x differentiates to just being positive five because we take the power of one, multiply it out the front, and then when we subtract one from the power, we are just left with five. And then differentiating nine will just give plus zero at the end, so we won't need to worry about that. And then just to finalize this answer, we find that g dashed of x is going to equal, and now two times negative three would give minus six over four, which is the same as minus three over two x, and then we still have plus five. So that is the answer for part B of this example. For part C, we have h of x equals x to the power of four minus three x squared over two plus seven x minus 10. So the derivative h dashed of x is going to equal, and we take the power and multiply it out the front. So we have four x, and then subtracting one from the power gives four x cubed for the first term. And then for the second term, when we take the two, which is the power and multiply it out the front, the multiplied by two and the divided by two cancel, so we'll just be left with minus three x. And then the plus seven x just becomes positive seven when we take the power out the front and one off the power. And the minus 10, that's the constant, differentiates to zero. So that is the derivative for part C of this example. And then for part D, we have y equals three divided by x squared. And now before we can apply this formula, we're going to need to rewrite our function slightly differently. So we can write this as y equals three times x to the power of negative two. So using an index law, we can take a positive power that's in the denominator and move it up to the numerator by using a negative power. So y equals three over x squared is the same as y equals three x to the power of negative two. And now we can calculate the derivative. So dy dx is going to equal, and we take the power and we multiply it out the front, so minus two times three x, and subtracting one from the power gives negative three here. So therefore the derivative dy dx is going to equal, minus two times three gives minus six, and x to the power of negative three can be written as minus six over x cubed. So that is the answer to part D of this example. So just to note there that we would also accept that the derivative dy dx is equal to minus six x to the power of negative three. That would also be an acceptable answer for that question. For part E, once again, we have to express x with a power. So we're going to rewrite this rule as being y equals minus four times x. And the square root of x is the same as a half. So that is, y equals minus four x to the power of a half is the function we're going to differentiate. So that means we can now calculate the derivative dy dx. So that's going to equal, and we're going to take the power at the front, and that multiplies the function, and then we subtract one from the power. And when we subtract one from a half, that gives us negative a half. So that means that dy dx is equal to, a half times negative four is negative two x to the power of negative a half. And that's an acceptable answer for this question. But there also is another way that the derivative could be expressed. So that is that the derivative dy dx is equal to negative two divided by, 
and the negative that's in this power would move it from the numerator to the denominator, so the bottom line of a fraction, and the half would mean that it's a square root that appears there. So that is our answer for part E of this example. And finally for part F we're going to rewrite the rule where x has powers. So the 1 on x becomes x to the power of negative 1, and then we add on to that 6 times x to the power of negative 1 half. So when we have divide by the square root of x, the negative can bring it up to the numerator, and the square root is the power of a half that appears there. So now we can calculate dy dx, and that's going to equal power out the front, so we're going to have negative 1 times x to the power of negative 2. We're going to subtract 1 off that power to get that negative 2. And then we add on to that, and we take the power out the front and multiply it by 6x, and when we subtract off the power we now get minus 3 over 2. So cleaning that up a little bit we get dy dx is equal to and this can just be written as negative x to the power of negative 2, so that's that first term. And then we have minus 3, so the negative half times 6 gives minus 3. And we have x to the power of negative 3 on 2. And that is now an acceptable answer for the derivative for part f. However, you could also have written the derivative dy dx as being equal to negative 1 over x squared. So that's the first term when we use that negative power to put it down into the denominator. And then our second term would be minus 3 divided by. And here the negative in the power will move it down to the denominator. And x to the power of 3 on 2 could be written as the square root of x cubed if you wanted to. So that's another way that we could state the derivative for part f, but the answer in the box is a perfectly acceptable answer.